Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. Where today, we're talking NWA Saturday night on TBS from November the 4th, 1989. That is right, we are a week past Halloween Havoc pay-per-view and our review there. If you want that, you got to go to Patreon at tinyurl.com slash PatreonBTT. Sign up and you can get access to all of our, not only the Halloween Havoc show, but all of our Patreon shows and clashes and pay-per-views. And guess what? There's another one coming up next week because there's a clash coming out. New York Knockout, I believe it is. So stay tuned for that. That'll be going down in another week to two weeks as well. So tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. I am sitting here with Doc and not Hopper. He's not on yet. What's new? Doc, please stop sniffling. The people the people are complaining when you do that. You're breathing. You're eating candy. For someone who fusses about people eating on podcasts, you sure do that a lot. I don't listen to this one. Mm. So what's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> That's funny. Buzz I, bunny wasn't tr- I wasn't trying to be funny. Hey, uh, have you dropped that that clash on the patrons yet? Oh, the clash dropped. It dropped um the day after the October twenty eighth, nineteen eighty nine episode dropped. You know, because chronologically, you should put that Saturday night out first, and yeah, then you put yeah. the, you know. So that was yeah, some I hot shit it. we did. That was some hot shit we did, right? It was a good show. Uh, that was I, a good I, show. We uh. I, I sometimes I have to show up on the patron feed to show how everybody how the fuck it's done, and then you know, <laughs> two hours of dra- dragging Silva's mouthy ass through that shit, you know. <laughs> well, I'll uh, talk about anything forever. <laughs> I love how you you like to talk about Silva, but when you're on the on on the show with him, you simmer it down a little, even though you threw a Puerto Rican jab at him at the beginning of that episode. Come hey, on, man. Hey, Grow up. Hey, well, hey, hey. How many times in that episode, and this is a little spoiler alert for the non-patrons, how many times did he say, man, I got to agree with Doc on that one. I mean, it was like Tom Pritchard hair fluffing. You should take a drink every time he said it. <laughs> Y'all were both agreeing with each other. but Because you okay. know when it comes to the pay-per-views, I, get, I, I take that seriously. We're not just fucking around here. This ain't scrap iron, scrap iron Bill Ford versus Wild Bill Irwin. These are pay per view matches. It was a very good pay per view. I mean, but you know, we won't talk about what we talked about on that show because you got to be a patron to get that. And speaking of uh, patrons, not necessarily patrons, but uh, it looks like looks like the superstar is on and he's green. So let's uh, let's add him in, and you and I can keep rolling as we add him, add him into it. But it was a good pay-per-view, and you can get access to our review at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTC. Is it, so who's going to do the clash? Do Silva. we know yet? Silva. Me, you, and Silva doing a clash. Ugh. <laughs> it's so tiring to drag non-talented people through a show. Uh, tell me about it. I do the same thing with you every week. <laughs> hey, yeah. What's up? Hi. How you doing? Nothing. About to watch the Pelicans drop a turd. Yeah, that's what y'all do, all right. Isn't that crazy how they they beat the Jazz, but they're probably going to drop a turd tonight against the Bulls. I just don't fucking get it, bro. That's what bad teams do. That's how you end up being a twelve and sixteen. Yeah, it's like they beat Flair at Starcade, and then the next night they lose to the Italian Stallion at a house show in fucking Monroe. <laughs> It's exactly, that's exactly what it is, Hopper. You're great yeah. with analogies. I mean, you you nailed it last week. You nailed it with the enhancement talent and the Texas A&M rant and whatnot. And this week you're nailing no it with the sorry ass Pelicans, man. They they will they will go over on Flair one night and the next night and bumfuck nowhere do a job to the Italian Stallion. You know what's great is is the fact that I get to kick Mike in the shins about this all the time. He used to think that their prob- the problems with the Pellies was Monty, Monty Williams, but now Monty's in Phoenix showing out. Well, he's the assistant, though. In Phoenix? Isn't he? Oh. He's the main man winning games. They, he got inspired. He got. To, he learned how to be a better coach once his whole family was killed. It. It's come on. It's two different teams, though. I mean, like you can't say, well, he was having meltdown. That was a different team way back then. Okay. But the funny part is, different players, same results. And on that note, 
Uh, I need to shout out a couple of folks before we get rolling into this week's episode. Shout out to Disrespectfully Classy, Marky Blassie, Mike Childry, Jeremy Priest, Joe Ice for your generous patronage each and every month. And then I got some new Patreon members and some members that moved over from Podbean on uh, the Patreon feed now. Jesus Salas Rodriguez, new patron but longtime listener. He went for the annual option. Remember, you can go annual and get a month for free. Tim Keeler, annual option as well. Thanks, Tim. Paul Goblet, new Patreon member. Mike Liddy, new Patreon member. Ryan Capaletti, new Patreon member. And on that note, thank you for being Patreon members. Uh, Doc, do you want me to roll into the five-star reviews, or how do you want to go tonight? Go ahead. Why do you yeah, got to ask him? Yeah, well, I don't you know because he, yeah. he likes to get his flips and dives in. So you know, I have no flips, no dives. I'm ready to. I don't even need to read the five stars. I'm ready to go into the show. We're yeah. we're back in Cobb County this week. Are you ready? If you ever take a trip down to Cobb County, Georgia, come on, watch the signs and respect the law and order. You'll be doing hard time. Remember that? You'll be doing hard time. Sing a little bit more. Maybe it'll come to me. Because a big boss man make you walk the line. Okay. He carries a big stick and ball and chain, too. And if you're looking for trouble, he'll be coming after you. I'm not a big fan of the Jim Johnston catalog of music. No. I'd prefer that his theme song be written by the, the same band that wrote the last Smoky Mountain theme. On God. that note, how did it go? F- I don't even remember. It wasn't it really, really sounded dated. I think. Uh, I I mean, which remember. one? the The second the, Smoky Mountain theme? Yeah, the band was called the Clintons. Oh, oh God, that, God, was that shit! Yeah, Smoky Mountain's <laughs> coming on your TV. I can't even remember. Oh, it was. It was. Ugh. It yeah, I didn't like, like a, that. A commercial for like a used. A used car lot in 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 fucking Amarillo or something. Spectrum rents, buddy. Yeah. The 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 first theme song stuck around for a, a very long time, though. I mean, I think and we almost got that, a full three that, years. It had that terrible keyboard synthesizer feel that all good wrestling must have. There yeah. you go. All right, I got to do some five-star reviews from Canada. Thanks to our friend Matt Wilson. He sent these to me because they don't show up on our feed. So got two more to do. I've done a few over the last few weeks. One of them is from someone named Rob. Book it. Watch him. Look at him. LOL. I guess that's when old David Crockett, we're in the studio, and Crockett was, look at him. Watch him, Tony. And that's all he would say. Anyway, he says, real wrestling. Mummy gimmick, go home. Doc knows how to work. LOL. Boy, that was a that one was from 2018, Doc. Jesus, it's still true today. It is, it is, it's still true. And then we got another one from Wick Whack, August of 2018. He says, "Love the reviews." Or she, I don't know what Wick Whack is. Love the reviews of the old NWA shows. Doc and Harper carry that other guy through. A ton of fun. Need Harper singing "Man Called Sting" as my new ringtone. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> That's actually PN News Jr. No, I've, I just remembered I read that one as I was reading it. So uh, thank you, uh, Matt, Mr. PN News Jr. Anyway. Hey, hey, uh, kayfabe, brother, kayfabe, even in Bogota. Kayfabe, huh? You, <laughs> Yeah, I know why you're saying kayfabe, brother. Anyway, all right. Well, yeah, that's that's uh, that's uh, it for the flips and dives in the beginning this week. We can We can actually get into the actual show if y'all would like. I think we need to severely start limiting the free content that goes on on this. So let's get it over with. That's right. All right. So we're talking NWA Saturday night on TBS from November the 4th, 1989. Of course, this is coming off of the heels of our Halloween Havoc pay-per-view. Uh, when the show opens up, they start with a few clips from Halloween Havoc. We are not at center stage, as Doc said. Doc, while I share my screen, tell the people where we're at. We're in Cobb County, Georgia. Harper already sang us in. Yeah. You know, Harper, he, Mike has been having some rough times at work lately, and he was he told me today <laughs> he's so tired that he wishes you and I could just do the show. Well, it's not easy being the token black guy. Wow. <laughs> Bro, That's do you up. do you know how how <laughs> Dusty told uh boss man, well he wasn't boss man, he was Ray Trailer back in what was it 86, he goes, "Kid, 
don't do shit you don't know how to do. Remember that old line that Cornette always says uh, on yeah. the show? I feel like I could tell that to a few people at the shoot job on a daily oh, basis. Oh, really? I mean, what are they doing? Everything. <laughs> like, just a, like an example that's not real, you know, like a kayfabe example. Kayfabe, brother, Ixnay on the Ixnay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that the biggest thing that you, we could say without giving away anything away is that uh, the the motto ought to be let's do two to three times the work that this job requires so we can look good. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. It's like what Fuller told Kerry Von Eric. Kevin. Kevin. They were working in a match one time. What did Fuller tell him, Doc? You do a better Fuller than I do. No, no, just do it. You, you're pretty good at it. Boys, I, I, uh, yeah, this we're doing a little bit too much. We're doing a little bit too much more than this job requires. And if everybody was... lived by that motto, it would be a better world. Yeah. So anyway, kid, don't do shit you don't know how to do. All right, Mike. Mike's been having some real interpersonal <laughs> differences with people though this last week or so. He really needs a vacation. Yeah. Have you ever gone back into the office? You also at the house. Mike hasn't been in an office in five years. That's wow. not true. That's not true. I want you to answer this question, Doc. Don't you, you always want to talk no, about I me? Work, I work from home, but Mike is so surly and just awful to people that we sent him home, and he's never come back. <laughs> he's so full of it. But anyway, all right. So again, we're at Cobb County Civic Center, Marietta, Georgia. Uh, Corny teases that his decision will be made later today where he'll tell us whose corner he will be in at the clash. Remember last week, there was going to be appear to be a match between his team of the Midnight Express and the Dynamic Dudes. So he's got to be at ringside and he teases of whose corner he'll be in. So stay tuned. We then jump to the first match and we've got Sting who's going to defeat Gene Ligon. Doc, I'll throw it to you first. You got any thoughts on a very quick match? I'll say very quick, a couple minutes. Man, yeah, but running back Ligon. just a little bit there. You see all those women there that were pawing on Sting as he was coming to the ring? I mean, yeah, that's not something you see today. No, they want his face paint all in their crotch. Come on. What? Is that the... <laughs> we... <laughs> if you're going to be late to the show, can you bring a little bit more than that? I was early. For you. He's only five minutes late. <laughs> only. Oh, yeah, they're pawing at him. Look at that. I like that old Tom feel where you got, you know, female fans. Now? Oh, yeah. Now? Now? You come to the ring? They, they probably got, if, if there are female fans, they got green hair and they wear a fucking Rick and Morty t-shirt. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. All right. Uh, I don't think there's female. I mean, there's female fans, but it's not like, not like this. We have female yeah. fans. We do. We here's the thing. We have more female listeners and fans than current wrestling does. I know that for a fact because I see because I see their posts in our Facebook group, and they are they are filthier than the dudes. That's gotta oh, be women. fake. I mean, you can't bleed out of that hole for a few days a month and not be just a filthy piece of crap. What? Oh, what? God. That's fucked up. I mean, I mean think about they, childbirth. I mean, they go through shit. We won't ever understand. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, that's what happened. Real. All because Eve ate that fucking apple. Couldn't keep All her right. fucking mouth off the fruit. <laughs> yep, she couldn't follow. She couldn't follow basic fucking in instructions. And now look at us living <laughs> yeah. in a world of shit. Yeah. Thanks, Eve. There's a, one of the female uh, listeners, Christina Hall. She's constantly getting, she is constantly getting a post approval put on on her posts on Facebook in the group because she's so filthy. I'm waiting for her to get banned, not by what us, this, but by what Facebook. What does this broad look like? Come on, bro. I mean, I don't. Do you think I investigate our uh, listeners, each and every one of them? Come on. I, I don't care about how many. Fucking friend request he probably gets now. That's right. Steven Jaworski is like, hey, hey do you, you like 
Do you like Overkill? I like Overkill too. Jesus Lord, <laughs> all you gotta all you gotta do is say, all you gotta do is say. I know what Channel Impact comes on, and he gets a hard on and cranks one off. <laughs> that that guy. I'm pretty, I'm pretty glad I don't know that answer to that on multiple levels. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that dude, I will give him credit. He will throw his brick and he will take the punishment from it. When he's supposed to, he is a glutton. Like Harper said one time about about these Saturday night shows, like when they went to Michigan and they're in the Silver Dome and, you know, 1,100 people. He goes, they love pain. Well, Brad Javorski loves pain. He will throw that brick and, and take the abuse and just deal with it. Oh my God! What a clown he is! What a buffoon! Way to treat right. the listeners, Mike. Uh, you know he gives me a hard time. What do you want me to do? You know? Take it. You're, I the mean, customer's he's not... always right. Right. Says the guy who doesn't interface with any customer. But but anyway, we'll keep going. Hey, you any don't just. On... You don't just. You may shop at Walmart, but you don't talk to the CEO, pal. Any other thoughts on Sting and Gene Ligon, Hopper? No. This, I, I, I felt like it was Groundhog Day. Did we see this shit fucking last week with the same fucking wrestlers, almost the same job guys? Well, they're in the same building, so yeah, I, I know. It's like I, I just watched this shit almost. Where's Pablo <laughs> Crenshaw? All right, so um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say Doc didn't have anything Here's, else either. No, no. Well, I mean, he did pretty quick work here, as we're seeing it on the video right there from the splash and the lock for the one, two, three. But he worked an arm, and I'm not sure we want Sting working an arm. You know, it's kind of like Magnum TA. Let's get in there. Yeah, well. Bam, 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 and go. How come it's not snowing? <laughs> well, think... on, on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Doc. Nothing. How did you know that? What? That it snows now when Sting appears. I don't Sting's like uh Jack Frost now. He's the new glacier. Yeah. <laughs> Did Javorski tell you that? What? That it snows when Sting appears. Me? Oh, uh, you, you know, I gotta bring up something too. Somebody I ain't about to tell you who this is because I they don't need to get no more publicity than than they're gonna get from me mentioning this. I got an email. And it was uh, from an AEW fan who said, you know, it's funny. I've heard y'all beat up Marco Stunt, but y'all don't say anything about Jonathan Gresham. Oh, he's terrible, too. He can wrestle, but I don't want to look at somebody who's five foot two. I'm sorry. First so, off. There you go. There you go. I don't like that either. I'm sorry. There I don't even know some, who that is. He who is, is a tiny little fella in ROH. And, and technically he could, sound. He could still beat but, Doc's ass. That's fine. But you know he can't play. Marco Stunt for the can't Lakers. beat your he ass. Shouldn't be a, he shouldn't be a wrestler. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes height's a requirement for entry. I disagree. Actually, Gresham's got a ton of talent, and he's bulked up. I ain't gonna say he's big, but he's got a lot more bulkier than he used to be, and he doesn't look like a six year old. Um, is he short? Yeah, Man, he can't. You know what can he, he do about like that? He looks like Jay Lethal if you cut Jay Lethal off at the knees. Nah, he's 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 put some size on Doc. If you haven't, yes, seen him in a he's while. bulked up a little bit lately because I started watching ROH again. Cause, uh, uh, me too. Because it's the only product on TV that's worth uh, a damn for me right now. For, uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling comes on here now. Jesus what? Christ! Yeah, bet you burned up your Saturday watching that, huh? Well, let me yeah. tell you something. I've tried in the last few weeks since football season's over, and I got a little bit of time extra time to watch some AEW. It's not good. Well. ROH is one hour and I can get through it in no time. And I am back on the ROH train. On that note, the Road Warriors defeat Rick Connor and Jake Steele. There you go, Hopper, a one minute match. Uh, Rick Connor was an interesting looking fella. Uh, Warriors just beat these guys to oblivion. They they did do a pitcher and pitcher promo during the one minute match, and the match was just about over when the pitcher yeah. and pitcher ended. But anyway, uh, beat down by the Real Warriors. Doc, anything from it? How 
how believable is it coming up here at the whatever the clash that the Freebirds can beat the Road Warriors? None. Because it wasn't believable in AWA when Regal and Garvin beat them. I remember when we first talked about that, we were like, man, what did they do? Pull out a 12 gauge and shoot them with it? <laughs> right. And it's, not, I mean, let's be clear Hayes is bigger than Regal, but what, I mean, it ain't that big a difference. It's still amazing when you think about it. You're like they beat yes. Road Warrior. It's it's just amazing. Um, yeah, I'm with you, Hopper. Do you have any thoughts on this uh, beatdown? No. It's very very quick. All yeah. right. On that note, we go from that to uh, Teddy Long. Uh, yeah. Old Scraps is going to cut a quick promo. Here it is. Just before I go to the ring with Norman today, I want you people to know one thing: that this interview time cost me a lot of money. And when I spend a lot of money, it upsets me. But I paid a lot of money for it because I want you people to know to not to bring Norman any more teddy bears. Nobody brings any teddy bears to Norman. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to have to do. If I have to snatch these teddy bears and pull their heads off, then I'll do it. Now, people, I don't care where you are. Don't bring any more teddy bears to Norman. Uh, so I guess other people get free interview time and Teddy Long's the only one who's paying these days. Doc, your thoughts? I kind of think they ought to have little teddy bears that look like Teddy Long when they're losing their hair, missing some teeth, and dressed up like a broken down pimp and and like, sell those in the merch table. Come on. Hubbard, <laughs> okay. any thoughts from you on what Doc said or Teddy Long? Stop giving him goddamn teddy bears. He's got and, no as, and as we oh, say look, that, one. what do you oh. think of Norman uh, here, Hopper? I mean, what so, do you want me to say? It's, it's, it continues to be stupid. What's on this hat? He painted it blue. Is that like a, de- it's a design or like characters or it's just, you know, whatever. I would have been able to tell you, but I enacted my new rule of fast forwarding. Yeah. It's just I, a pattern, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he hey, painted that. That's a hat he got like that. I'm looking Probably. down the bear. Look at this. When this comes on, I'm looking at that blue line at the bottom, Mike, and yeah. I see all that. Hey, oh, oh, wait a minute, mommy, mommy. Here, yeah, go back, go back. Come on. Oh, I'm going I back because I, I, I. That's better than the match because you yes. fast forwarded. Yeah. Oh. Okay. She's cute. How, how old is she? Oh, um, thirty. Oh, you, you think no. in 1989 she was still listening to bad English? Mm, yeah. When I see you smile. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, that little uh, rat. Uh, <laughs> that little kid's got got McDonald's suspenders on. <laughs> Look at the. Yeah, he, she's the she's the aunt. She's the cool aunt, and she's there to take the little boy to see some wrestling and maybe get. Some, you know, that's other true. Wrestling later, she's the cool aunt that fucking drives like the the fucking Cavalier station wagon. Look at those hoop earrings. Yeah, she's hoping to catch Sting's eye, maybe Luger, mm. Tom Zink. Tom Zink, that's good for her. That's yeah. the kid that Pillman winked at. In the <laughs> <laughs> What's that girl's name, uh, Harper? Oh. Michelle, mm, I was gonna say Lindsay. Lindsay, yeah. She looks, she looks like a brandy. No. Nah. Okay. Well, uh, so did you really fast forward through the match, Doc? Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, we got. Here's uh, the thing: I see that little blue line, and I see all that gray space that's got to fill up with blue before <laughs> I can be done. And this fat turd comes out there, and I'm like, nope. I'm not going to watch this hospital issue take on the BMX reject, excite bike reject. And, uh, <laughs> nope. Man, I'm telling you, wait till he's out there with Abdullah. If Abdullah doesn't spike him in the head with the fork and then make him drink vials of his own blood, then I ain't interested. Well, Norman is out there with Teddy right now. He's going to defeat Rusty Riddle. That's Mr. Excite Bike, as Doc, I think it was last week, called him. Norman wins in a uh, meh. Match at best. I'll keep moving. Yeah. Hey, y'all are down by nine early to the Bulls. Of there course. There you go. 
I mean, it's what you expect now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? Harper what ought to, should have played some action on the game. So we go to the next match. It is Ranger Ross versus the Cuban Assassin. This God, is a. <laughs> I told you about this last week. This is a flag match. And Wait, what did you say? A flag match. Hey. Oh, I, I missed the L. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a flag match. <laughs> Wait, and what? when I they. I no, I said flag. If I thought, if I flag. I I well, so. They are not okay. Here's what I wanted to talk about. When they announce this match, they say one fall, thirty minute time limit. And I swear, the first thing I thought when I was taking notes was, if this thing goes thirty minutes, the show might be over. There's no way. <laughs> no, right. So thank God this thing only went five minutes and ends up being a no contest. I just was like. Okay, here's a question. Yeah. What do you think the longest match Ranger Ross had ever had at this point was? Mm, Ten minutes. Okay. He pro. I mean, that's hard to say. He probably had some some. What's some the longer longest? Than that. What was the longest match of your career, Mike? I told you. Roughly. I told you one time, twenty five to thirty, and I, I was dying. Bet you were a fat ass. And, and I was in shape at the time. And I was like, God. No, that wasn't tag team. That was singles, but dude. Man, that's just a... think, bro. Ranger Ross missed Desert Storm by like a year or so. I mean, then his gimmick would have really gotten over because everyone loved no. that American Hero shit. You, 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 don't, you don't think so? What Craig Pittman didn't get over. That's Yeah, but that was a couple of years afterwards. Oh. Hopper, I would agree with you if he didn't have the charisma of a... Sh- you know, piece of sheetrock. I mean, this guy. Yeah. He I don't just, think he they, don't have. He could have been. It could have been nine. It could have been nine twelve oh one. I don't think it. <laughs> matters. I don't think it matters. Dude, we'd have had to be at the height of the Cold War, and he'd have had to have been a white dude called Ranger Ross, and he might have had a chance. But this dude has no charisma. It's just like Doc said. F L. Fast forward. I mean. They're not. I felt bad for the Cuban assassin. They're five minutes into this thing when some big guy walks down to the ring and he attacks Ranger Ross and then attacks Cuban assassin and Jim Ross and Corny are on commentary. They can't even save this thing. They're like, "Who is this guy?" Great, another big blonde guy with a mullet and jammy pants. (laughs) Yeah, these motherfuckers are a dime a dozen here. Look at this jammy pants. They must got ten of them in the back. Like At first, fucking... I thought they were Zubaz. At first, I thought they were camouflage. Then I thought they were Zubaz. Let's get generic. Or they must keep these assholes in like capsules, like on aliens. <laughs> and okay, I need a big asshole with a blonde-headed fucking mullet. Okay, right, I'm gonna ask a out. real. I'm gonna ask a real question. Let here, him cause... finish, Doc. He was about to roll. I mean, that's what it. I mean, just think, Dan Spivey. They all look like this. That guy looks like Shane Douglas took all the steroids in the back. (laughs) Who is this guy? I don't even know. I don't care. But I was going to ask y'all. I'm asking Mike. No spoilers. All all I'm going to say. All I'm going to say. Years ago. All I'm going to say is keep track and ask me the same question in about four or five weeks. Who this guy is. I and won't remember it enough to care by then. Is this Firebreaker Chip? <laughs> no, that's not Firebreaker Chip. Dark period, dude. I told you, I don't know any, who any of these people are. Is that PM News? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's... He looks He looks like Dan My Spivey. Asshole. He looks like Dan Spivey, Shane Douglas, and Hugh Morris had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> If you're in the Facebook group, tag Hopper and post who this is. Yeah, that's how we're gonna play this. SMU heavyweights. <laughs> Poor Lance. <laughs> Lance don't even he don't even answer him anymore. He's just whatever. <laughs> he just ignores it. All right. Well, on that note, um, we do need to go to uh, Lex Luger promo coming up shortly, and here it is. 
Small scoreboard. Gentlemen, we'll see. Fly in Brian in action in just a few moments, but right now, let's hear these comments from the United States Heavyweight Champion, the total package, Lex Luger. You know, up till Halloween Havoc, Brian Pillman, all you've enjoyed are victories and success. Now that you've wrestled the total package, Lex Luger, for the real deal, and I'm talking about the U.S. title, you find it a bitter pill to swallow that you came up short. But let me tell you something, Brian Pillman, you're finding out just now what everybody else has found out in the sport of professional wrestling that's come against up the total package. I'm an unbeatable force. You want me? The contract's open. Go for it again, Pillman. So Pillman lost to Luger at Halloween Havoc. We're not going to talk about the match because we already did that on the pay-per-view review. But Luger cuts a quick promo letting Pillman know he didn't get the job done. I'm not going to just... We'll, we'll revisit this if they end up doing battle again or whatnot. But what did you think, Doc? I I think he's a lot more confident in hindsight than maybe he should be. But that's good heel work, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, he ain't cutting the promo of all times, but he's setting up the return, so, okay. I tell you, Luger is the star of this shit. Yes. I want to see more fucking Luger. I want to see old school flair, and I want to see more heel Luger. You should have been at the at the pay-per-view. The star was, the, <laughs> was Muda. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, that that's true. And more fucking Muda. They're about they are one month and nine days away from Roy sticking Lee a Buddha Muda's they're gonna stick a Muda. Buddha Muda's ass. They are just gonna destroy him. And, and Star Cage uh future shock. It is yes, the destruction of him uh, is epic. That's how that's how I'll explain it, and then we'll talk about it when we get there. I thought, I'm like you, I, I, I'm i with Hopper. Luger's 89 is tremendous. Yeah. Uh, he's not, at 90, he's going to be just as good. Luger's, Luger's been phenomenal, and he keeps being phenomenal. Brian Pillman's phenomenal as well, who's up in the next match. Pillman's going to defeat Richard Sartan. Uh, Pillman cuts a pitcher-in-pitcher -pitcher promo on Luger and tells Luger that their feud has only just started. And I'll just say this, if it happens, I'm ready, but no spoilers. We'll see what goes down. But those two put on a hell of a show at the pay-per-view. What did we say the other day? It'll be great. You know what Pillman needs? A vanilla tag team partner. <laughs> Pillman needs a Z-Man, right? Doc? Sure. Yeah. Jesus, Lord. Doc, did you see that tweet from, I think it was uh, Laron nope. B on Twitter? He said, he said, we were talking about the Z-Man's match a couple weeks ago. And I said, Doc, what are your thoughts? And you started going, <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? He's, like, He's the Z-Man. I'm getting some Z's. You pop <laughs> you pop some folks with that one. You got to do commercials for, for fucking NyQuil back then. Who, the Z-Man? Yeah. He should have. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think he's that bad. He's not bad, but you know how Harper used to talk about um, Al Perez, and he was like, "There's no sizzle to the steak." Yeah, it's just, he's that's. I'm not saying he's Al Perez, but there's no sizzle, man. It just is what it is. Yeah, he was in WW with WWF like a half an hour in the mid '80s. I forgot I just, about that. I just don't think he's he does just. just they always used to talk about that it factor. Some guys got it. Pillman's got it, and Z-Man ain't got it. Yeah. You know what I'm looking forward to? Christmas. This, this promo with woman? That too. Okay. What We're not too to? terribly far from getting Arn and Barry Windham back in this promotion. Well, good. Dude, Arn is literally around the corner. Mm-hmm. I mean, you talk you about Jaworski cranking one off. That makes me feel like I need to crank one off. Are you just going to beat it on air that night when he returns? Sure. I'm going to wait. Are you really? Why wait. Are you going to mute yourself or are you just going to let it happen? No, I'm going to rip down my pants and just start beating at it. 
You ought to get, get you ought to get Lafonda to just service you while he returns, and you can have a double. You can have a double that night. I mean, you what? can. What is wrong with you? You can. Girl, you can would crank you show one a little off. bit of respect? These, These are funny I mean, families. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! We don't Harper's go over there with like Harper's over here like Kevin go. Sullivan getting blown during the show. Back in my day, we don't we didn't go after people's families. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people get your joke when you say that. It's like two inside baseball. Well, that's what you got to listen and pay attention for. This isn't just a, you know, everybody thinks that we just come here and talk about busting out guts and ha ha ha. But there's a little bit of layer to our comedy and uh, you're going to have to pay attention and listen regularly if you want to be a part of things. I wouldn't call what we do comedy, but okay. Let's go now to woman. Really? You wouldn't call Harper talking about the turtle head in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that is unintentional comedy. I don't care. The word comedy's in there somewhere. Dude, Harper said, Harper, how long did you say you, you took you to figure out that that was a turtle shell hitting the tank in the middle of the night? It was a while. I was like, what the fuck is that noise? And he'll come up to the water. It was like, clunk, 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 with his shell hitting the fucking glass. (laughs) (laughs) That night Hopper broke that news. He's like, bruh, he was as big as a hubcap. (laughs) I wonder where where that turtle is now. He's he's in the West Espanade Canal just crawling around. You think he's still alive? I hope Man, so. Turtles live a long time, dude. Yeah. There's a lot of crap for him to eat on in that canal. Ugh. Yeah. All right, we'll keep moving. Let's go to woman now in her promo. Gentlemen, to World Championship Wrestling. In just a few moments, we'll see the Steiner brothers in tag team action. But right now, let's hear these comments from woman. I'm so happy. Everything's going my way. Doom has done their job very well. And I've decided to pay them well, too. I'm very proud of Kevin. He's done his job quite well, also. It's all going my way. I am woman. Money can buy me whatever I want. Brian Pillman, Sting, maybe even the world champion could be persuaded and pursued Could you imagine me controlling the world champion? Oh, I like that idea. He has lots of money, but I have more, so I could offer him much more. Hmm, it's an idea, don't you think? Doc, thoughts? How defenseless is Ric Flair against woman um, for a shoot? Very. Yeah, I'm with Harper on that. Okay. Yeah. He right. can't turn that down. That's like no. Bill, that's like Bill Ford turning down a can of fucking Kodiak. Come on. <laughs> Premium a, chew like that is hard to turn down. <laughs> there's a promo in 1990. It's been a long time since I saw it. Where, where, woman is starts pursuing flair and in a, it's on Saturday night. So we'll see it. And woman comes out and tells flair, you know, that she, she wants to partner with him. And, and flair's like, honey, you know, I try to keep business and pleasure separate, which was a straight lie, but whatever. And he says, the, and he's out there with like four other women. He's like, these women are pleasure and you're strictly business. And woman's goes, when you're tired of dealing with girls, you come, you, you come see me. And it just, mm. the, the crowd pop. It's just the way she delivers the line is perfect. But anyway, so. So, that, so Kevin that, Sullivan's back, huh? Yeah. That's what I was telling you on. That's what I was telling you when we were talking last weekend on the clash. That's exactly what I was saying. I was like, yep, be careful what you're saying. Because he's back. Hey, did you see this at the beginning of this match with the Steiners? Oh, go ahead, Doc. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just realized. Done. Okay. You didn't have anything else from the promo? No. All right. Harper, you? Nah. All right. Stay tuned. Obviously, Doom is, is a thing now. We'll see them shortly. And we go to the match. We got 
the Steiner brothers versus Agent Steel and Scrap Iron Bill Ford. Look at uh, Scott Steiner. He almost fell through the ropes again. Yeah. I know. You see <laughs> and, and he actually, for, for the patrons out there watching the video version, he hooks the rope. What like happened he's got there? It. He didn't have his arm all the way over, but it was close. He almost went, he almost went backwards through the ropes again. And isn't that kind of dangerous? Oh, knock yourself out! <laughs> but he can just slipped. Thirty? T- can I get thirty minutes and ten seconds? What a fucking suplex! Here it comes. We're at thirty oh seven now. Here it comes. <sighs> He just flung. I mean, he didn't even he, help him. <laughs> he just snatched him. Yeah, he just snatched him and German him. This guy's definitely got some Kodiak in his uh, gear bag. Harper, what you think? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. The biggest question is, does he have any in his mouth right now? <laughs> Possibly. Could you imagine uh, wrestling a, ma- a match with that in your mouth? I've seen no, guys that do would it. Suck. <laughs> I've seen guys do it. <laughs> you probably just end up swallowing it. I, it's what I was thinking, but I never asked. Here is um, S- Scott's about to deliver the. They didn't call it the Frankensteiner yet, but he delivers the Frankensteiner right there to uh, it's, Scrap Iron it's Bill done Ford. Perfect. It, it was pretty damn remarkable when he hits it. The Frankensteiner mm-hmm. is like the Canadian destroyer. No matter how many times I see it, I'm like, how did do, how did he do that again? And what makes it more impressive is c- coming from a big guy like him. Sure. Any thoughts? Any other thoughts, Doc, on this match? No, I mean, they're primed and ready for some more doom. What about you, Hopper? Anything? No. All right. So now we'll go to the next promo. We got Terry Funk. And uh, this is going to lead up to what's going to happen next with he and Ric Flair. Here it is. In action, let's go to Jim Ross. He's standing by to talk to the wild Texan, Terry Funk. Thanks very much, Jim Cornette. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, the Big Class of Champions 9 event live as it happens on November the 15th, right here on TBS, the Superstation, New York Knockout, live from Troy, New York, the main event, a non-title event with I Quit Rules. Nature Boy Ric Flair, the final confrontation perhaps, with Terry Funk, but I understand you've got something to say to Ric Flair, and you want some special stipulation. Get that smirk off of your face, Ross. I know that you realize what happened in the Thunderdome, and you think that I let JTEX Corporation down, and so do all you people out there. Let me tell you something. The NWA is not big enough for myself and Ric Flair. That's why I suggested an I Quit match. I hate his guts. Ric Flair hates my guts. But I'll say one thing to Ric Flair. Ric Flair, you're a tough individual. And you are about as tough of an opponent as I've ever gone up against. And it's not big enough. This area is not big enough. This country is not big enough in wrestling. And that's why I want you in an I Quit match. But after it's over with, let's make this the final match. And if you beat me, I will walk across there and I will say to you, Ric Flair, you are the better man. I mean, you'll shake his hand and say he's the better man if he beats you. If he beats me, I will walk across the ring and say that to him. But if I beat him, he has to do the same to me. Interesting situation. We'll hear from Nature Boy Ric Flair later in the hour. Now let's go back to Rhubarb Jones. All right. So Funk wants Flair in an I quit match. And Funk says if Flair gives it to him and uh, Flair beats him, he'll shake his hand. Doc, thoughts? How great a promo was that? Yeah, that that's was a, good stuff. That was good. Wipe that smirk off your face, Ross, just from the beginning. And I hate his guts. And this, this isn't big enough. This area isn't big enough for the both of us. Just simple and effective. And it means he got a two for one on those shirts because this is the same design shirt, but a different <laughs> color that we saw a few weeks ago with the blue and the white. Man, it's that was that was a great promo. I mean. He's like, let's get this shit over with, for real. It's not hard. Minute and 40 seconds is how long that promo was. And how great was it? Uh, Fantastic. Harper, what'd you think? That's good shit, man. They're going to fight again, and I want to see it again. Yep. 
tremendous. And you're right, Doc. That he had to get a two for one because that's the same style of shirt, just different color. With the red fringe. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, after Terry Funk cuts that remarkable promo, and of course we're gonna hear from Ric Flair shortly. We go to Tom Zink. He's gonna defeat Pat Rose. Tom Zink is uh Doc's favorite wrestler. The Z Man wins with a with a sleeper. Jim Ross says Pat Rose is getting some Z's. Not only was Pat Rose getting some Z's, Doc was getting some Z's during the match. Uh, Doc, yeah, thoughts? I don't have anything against Z, man. I just don't have anything for him either. And I have no notes from this match. It's it's what I said earlier. Harper, do you have anything from this? Uh, he kind of uh, looks like Richard Marks. <laughs> okay. You don't know, <laughs> do you know who that is? Do you know who that is? <laughs> I don't know who he's talking about. Then why'd you laugh like you did? Because cause I'm laughing like I don't know who he's talking about. He was an 80s mulleted pop. What was that song he had? God, he was terrible. Like the I Love You and some yada yada. But he was pretty big there for a second. Yeah. But, you know, I guess girls liked him and shit. Well, I'll be right there. If something wherever you do. How to go, Doc? I don't know. I was listening to the Bullet Boys, bro. I'll be right there waiting for you or some oh, shit. That song is awful. Well, the Z Man wins with a sleeper, ironically, as he puts Doc to sleep. I'm okay this week. I just don't have any notes. No, I mean, I'm I'm not trying to knock him. I'm just back in the day. Back in the day, you used to tell us stop taking so many notes on the matches. We'll just listen to the promos. But they took that away from us, so now we got to actually fucking pay attention to these rotten ass Bro, matches. If you think it's bad now, wait. No, till... that's what I, I I I just fuck. Wait till. Wait till they get to 1990. You're going to have to run a disclaimer at the start of the show when we get there so that Harper and I can just sh completely shit on everything. People, angles. Because right now we always try to be, well, it's not the talent's fault. They were handed this shit by herd. But if we're going to go into week after week of nonsense, we're going to have to go for it, pal. Uh, okay. Well, on that note, we got another promo. We're going to go to Ric Flair. Is, uh, he's got to respond to Terry Funk, I would guess. So here that is. So to Terry Funk's comments earlier, Jim Ross is standing by with the heavyweight champion of the world, Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Thanks very much, Jim Cornette. Ladies and gentlemen, as we heard earlier from Terry Funk, the big main event at the Clash of Champions 9 New York Knockout, that event you can see live as it happens right here on TBS on November the 15th. The main event will be an I Quit match, where to lose the match or to win the match, you must make your opponent say, I quit. I've had enough. That's the only way the match can be won. Ric Flair and Terry Funk, the final chapter in Troy, New York, but an interesting sidebar to this. Earlier today, he said that if you made him say, I quit, that he will walk across the ring and shake your hand and admit to the world that you are a better man. Well, I find that very difficult to believe, just as I'm sure you do. Last time I shook his hand, I spent seven days in the hospital and two and a half months out of this sport. So, Funk... The world knows the ground rules now. It's I quit. No title on the line. Just integrity and your very manhood. At best, think about it. You have promised the wrestling world that you'll walk across that line and shake my hand and tell the world I'm a better man if I win. That's a lot of incentive. Troy, New York, get ready. The Nature Boy, woo! Bright lights, big cities, pretty ladies, Troy, New York, I quit rules. Terry Funk, the nature boy, is going to walk that aisle, and in Troy, New York, you're going to say, I quit. Woo! What a matchup it's going to be, November the 15th. Let's go to Rhubarb Joe. I thought that was spectacular. Doc, what would you think? Once again, how hard does it have to be? You don't have to stand out there forever, and you don't have to say everything. He responded to Funk. He finds that shit hard to believe. Why wouldn't he? The last time I shook his hand, I, I was almost out of the sport. The only problem I had with it is he was like bright lights and big cities. 
And Troy, New York has a population <laughs> of 50,000 people. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to ask y'all where in the fuck Troy, Troy, New York is. Uh, I think it's upstate New York. By like, yeah. bu- bu- by like Buffalo and shit? Well, not that far. It's, it is in the Albany, Schenectady okay. um, uh, metropolitan area that has a million people between the three cities. <clears throat> but 50,000 people, bro, that's a small little town. Bro. I wonder how much that, that, that show drew. Oh, I, I, I looked it, it was, but it, That probably wasn't too much of the problem because it was on free TV, you know. But what, well, what I was going to say was, Doc, you're here. He's gonna get the big head. You're an intelligent human being. If you got the internet at your fingertips, when you look that up, the average hillbilly watching NWA Saturday Night on TBS heard New York, and they don't know the difference between the state That's of New true. York and the now, city. Troy, I look, I look. Troy's not upstate. It's just up from New York, but still. Anyway. Uh, Hoffman, Why do you we want to take this? Terry Funk and Ric Flair to a town of 50,000 people five states away? Yeah. Dude, you, you preach to the choir. Hopper, what'd you have from it? It's, it was Flair. I like to see him wrestle. You know, just well, if you're going to see, if you're going to see him wrestle, you're going to have to do one of these Friday morning shows. Fuck that. <laughs> Whoa! I didn't mean to piss you off, pal. I, I was gonna tell you how much I missed you and how much I had to drag Silver through, but you know that that Puerto Rican princess is not so bad to work with if you think about it. Oh, he does all the talking. You don't have to do shit. Now I know how you feel. <laughs> Excellent analysis from Silva on the show and Doc just now. <laughs> I, I got to repeat what you said, Doc. He Flair said the last time they shook hands, he ended up getting piled driven on a table and he was in the hospital. And I thought that was the best thing because why should he trust if he defeats Funk that Funk's going to shake his hand after yeah. what are we? What are we now? Six months into this feud because it started in what May? Maybe something. Yeah, something oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm that's still when, super um, interested yeah. in it. Yeah. I mean, they've had some nice twists and turns, and and I I don't think they've like overdone it at this point. Like with everything they did, you know, with the suspension with Funk and and when Funk tried to kill him, I mean, they've done it right. They've <laughs> they've slow paced it. Look at Teddy Long running away. <laughs> Is that what you were laughing at? Come on. <laughs> uh, but they've done it right, and and look, we're gonna we're gonna see what happens at the at the next clash. On that note, we do go to Dr. Death, Steve yeah, well, Williams. Let me say this. The only thing I don't like is that it's non-title. Yes. Which isn't going to matter, but... Oh, I just think that, that if the champ is out there in a one-on-one match, the title should be on the line every time. Especially against someone like Funk. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I agree. Dr. Death, Steve Williams is going to defeat Mark Kyle. Now, we're la- I was laughing because... Teddy Long's out there shucking and jiving. What does that on mean? The, what term? What ring that term? Look, here comes. Well, look, here comes. Here comes. Look at him. Look at watch, watch Teddy Long. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Death gets mad and looks out there and sees him. And I don't know what the hell's being said, but Dr. Death, like, nah, bruh. Yeah. And watch Teddy get the piss out of there. He's like, woo, I'm not letting this white boy catch me. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, Teddy, Teddy off the golf rail and was gone. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Doc, any notes on Dr. Death and Killer Kyle, Mark Kyle, I should say? How much does Teddy Long look like Pop Pop? Mm, he looks more like Scraps than Pop Pop. Oh, I know. You got to clarify when you say pop pop because there's a certain segment of the audience who think you'll be thinking about Ric Flair, but that's not no, pop pop. No, your your pop in law, your father in law. Which my father in law was named Pop Pop long before Pop Pop. We had that conversation in 2015, but anyway, Pop Pop. He, I mean, a little bit, but you know, not not really. 
Okay, so Corny asked in the middle of this match, where does Teddy buy his clothes? Yes, I heard that. Soul Train Fashions. That's actually let's, might let's be true. Let's say that you're not in the New Orleans metro area. Is there some sort of national wholesaler or national uh, seller that could get you some pimpware? Maybe K and G. I don't K. know, Harper. On, on their clearance rack. They ain't <laughs> nothing that can compete with Soul Train, man. Yeah. On a national in level. The, in the pimp section. Well, no, I mean, Soul Train specializes in that just pimp right. shit, man. So you can't, you can't say, well, there's a national store that you could get and replicate what you can get from Soul Train. I mean, now, Soul Train is now, just now ridiculous. Now, do most, Mike, Mike, now do most major cities have something like a Soul Train? So, like, here in the in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, you know, one weekend you and I could take a field trip, BTT field trip? I don't really know, but I remember when I first moved to the Metroplex, I, w- I went to Big T's Bazaar one time. Uh, down in Oak Cliff? Yeah. And I've been there. There was some interesting stores and interesting you get some tires. No, there was some interesting stuff down there though, but I didn't see nothing that was man, Soul Train is a thing of its own, but as I say that, I'm sure Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, I'm sure yeah. Los Angeles. I'm, I just I'm find sure it's hard to believe that every player and pimp around the nation has to come into New Orleans to get geared up. Exactly. I'm sure there are there are well, I'm getting distracted right now. I'm sure there are stores. Mm. We 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 got to go back. Get the on, body on her, huh? Any let me let me ask this before we stop. Anything else on Steve Williams and Doctor uh, Doctor Death and Mark Kyle? No, no. Okay, because I'm getting distracted, and it's because Doom is coming out with Woman and Kevin Sullivan, and Woman's outfit is ridiculous. How does she you, keep that up? I know, huh? Doc, look at what do you think about what's happening here? <sighs> Popper, you you surely got some thoughts, brother. She's got a knockout body, man. Look at that! God damn, we, we, go back. We say, we say it every week. Go through the ropes again. <laughs> watch, watch. I'm gonna tell you with a pause. Of, right, stop. Oh, sh- when she was coming up. Yeah. Yeah. She. Hold on. I, I, <laughs> he wants me to pause it so he can get the cranking. Tell me Let's when, see. Hopper. Okay. No. no? no. That almost. Ah! Right there. No. Deep. Attack. Oh, God there damn. Go. There you go. Good job, Michael. That's good. What 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 cup size would you say that is, a Harper? Mm, a big D? B, 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 a, a D, big, a C. I was thinking a big B or a C. Yeah, that sounds about right, Doc. Yeah. I. I She's out there with two unidentified masked black men and Kevin Sullivan. That can't be good. I mean, it, this is ridiculous. Look at that. And she ran Missy Hyatt off, so she ran our competition. That's off. not That's true. Where the hell has she been? Missy's gone. We talked about that last week. Is she gone? No. Was she, no, she no, no, no. She, she's, yes. Yeah, when I say she's gone, she's not, like, gone permanently or anything. I mean, she's she'll be back. But she was sent home, uh, told she was fat. too fat, <laughs> and whatnot. Anyway. Doom is out here. This is the first time we've seen Doom on Saturday night. We saw Doom at the at Halloween Havoc, and they're up against George South and John Kennedy, Johnny Kennedy. And as you said, as we talked earlier, Doc Sullivan is out there, and that was my main note. Other than Doom just wins uh, pretty quickly. What's his function in all of this? I, it it ends up not being nothing, from what I remember, but. I believe the term is not being anything, you double negative, no grammar having podcast jackass. What's it say about you that you're still doing a show with me then? Yeah. 
Whatever. Okay, any thoughts on the match, though? I thought it took them a while. Yeah, it did. The Road Warriors come out there and, and get it done, man. That's the standard. Yeah, they should have done the same thing. I agree. It went a little too long. I mean, it was quick, but it still went like, I don't know, three or four minutes. It should have been quicker. Should have been much quicker. All right. So on that note, I got to go to Corny. Give me a second. Let me get to the timestamp. Corny's got something to say. Here it is. Wait, wait. What's this? Tommy Rich. And gentlemen, to World Championship Wrestling, we know that on November the 15th, the Class of Champions live here on TBS, it will be the Midnight Express wrestling the dynamic dudes. What we do not know is where will Jim Cornette be during that match? Well, you know something? I, I've had a hard decision to make, but over the past week, I've been forced into making one. Now, I can't be in the corner of somebody against the Midnight Express. I can't do it, so I can't go to the ring with the dudes. But after what the Midnight Express have done to me, I can't be in their corner either because they humiliated me. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to watch the match on television. Oh, no, Jimmy. I think you're uh, sadly mistaken. Did you forget about the contract? It's all right here in black and white. It's binding. It's legal. You will be at ringside November 15th. Now, in the meantime, if you don't want to be in their corner, well, that's fine with us. But November 15th, you will be there. It says so right here. You want to know the reason why Stan Lane don't like Johnny Ace? Yeah. You want to know it? Three years ago in Florida, Stan Lane broke up with a girl. She ran out on him because he was running around on her. But she went out, and she went out a couple of times with Johnny Ace. And nothing ever came of it. Johnny didn't like her that much. It was just a social thing. But Stan found out about it, and he could never forget about it. So all this time, he's carried that grudge. He couldn't accept what goes on in life. So, Stan, you embarrassed me, and I embarrassed you. You never have forgiven Johnny, but I tell you one thing. I'm not going to be at ringside except to sit there in a chair and watch that match. I'm not going to be in a dude's corner. I'm not going to be in the midnight's corner. It's going to be a heck of a match. I just hope somebody gets their attitude straightened out. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of controversy here on World Championship Wrestling. Now let's go back up to Rhubarb Jones. I'm not buying it. There's no way Johnny Ace is scooping up Stan's women, and it's just, I, I, I don't buy it. Doc, what do you think? Well, and he said it was just a social thing. That's code word for he just slipped her the sausage a couple of times. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he didn't even buy her dinner. <laughs> They're just friends. They're just friends. Mm. Uh. I really, I thought Cordy was great here. Just, I, I can't do it. I can't go against the Midnight Express, but I can't, you know, and then stands out there. No, no, but Jimmy, you didn't read the fine print. I, this is good stuff. Yeah. Uh, the feud, again, is dumb, but what's going on with Stan and Johnny Ace and all the interplay, it's some good stuff. It is stupid. You know, when you think about it, of all the things that could break up the Midnight Express is these two assholes. Well, that's why you got to stay yeah. tuned to see if it's what no, actually happened. it was a broad, and it's always a broad, isn't it? It's always a fucking woman. Damn. What? Now, my question is, is Stan Lane really Stephen P. New? Are they the same person? No. Cor Corny had a, some legal scholar action going on out there. No. Um, okay. Any other thoughts on Corny's promo and the announcement, Hopper? I got to see if they break up. Mm-hmm. Who? The Midnight. Yeah. Don't you think you would know more about that by now? Oh, sh come on, Doc. Yeah, for <laughs> real. Can, can you go with hey, me? Well, on the, on that note, we go to the next match. We got Tommy Rich, who's going to defeat mm. Lee Scott. We get a pitcher-in-pitcher -pitcher promo from Gary Hart where Hart announces that Rich will battle the Great Muda next week. Mm. Boy, you want to see my mouth drop. That's what happened when I heard that. I cannot wait to review Rich getting destroyed by Muda. This is how do you, know he, how do you know he loses? Yeah. He could be the next TV champion. 
he is nothing but the constant cokehead, and there is no Come next on. to anything. If that eliminated wrestlers from contention, we wouldn't have any winners in the 80s. Well, I, he's also a, a scum human being, too, but that's... Well, that would let out a few as well. Uh, well, you know, it's amazing. I ran into a few of them over the years, but none of them were as scummy as him. Really? He's the scummiest wrestler you've ever met? Damn straight. Tommy Rich. Tommy Rich, yep. the worst. wildfire. Piece of crap. Trash human. Never met anybody worse. I mean, here's the thing. I, I've been around people who've done some crazy things like that weren't around me. But as far as just a disrespectful piece of crap, this jabroni and sap in the ring right now doing arm drag after arm drag because that's the only freaking wrestling move he knows is the scummiest piece of crap. Well, He's just old school. Yeah, that motherfucker will work an arm till it falls. Jesus off. Lord, yeah. bro. He will do that dude calls arm drag nonstop. And then he'll work the every match is what you're watching right here. Every one of them. Hey. Hey. I'm tired. Hey. <laughs> hey. That's what we're gonna do out here, Lee. Alright. I'm gonna get in the rain. I'm gonna grab an arm. We'll work it, brother. You know, go to the mat. I'm gonna lay down on you. Wrenching on the back. Just work, you know, brother, work, you know. Uh, ain't no need to get out there and rush. <sighs> Piece of crap. Anyway, during the match, Corny is still talking about how the dudes in the midnight painted him into a corner. And then Corny gets political and says something about voting early <laughs> and often in the last presidential election, which popped the hell out of me. Uh, no Doc, comments. you... No. <laughs> that's a that is a federal crime i want no part of that he yeah. said he said vote early and often in the last presidential election i was like wait you i know this is wrestling and it's a work but don't say that but anyway um the wrong guy won here tommy rich wins unfortunately doc any thoughts on that no i mean he stopped working an arm long enough to get up and drop that loot this press on him and go to the go to the pay window. Ridiculous. Aubrey, you got anything from this cokehead's No, match? it's the same. He just grabs an arm and works it. Hey hey yeah. Harper. At the pay per view, Tommy Rich had a match with the Italian style I'm sorry, um not Italian stallion. Cuban assassin. Well good for him. It was Ooh. negative sixty stars. I bet it was. Good he God! His arm. Trash. They put that on a pay per view. Oh, and at the boy. wrong place of the pay per view. Oh really? Oh man, he got booed. Man, them people, them Philly, they didn't want nothing to do with that the idiot Philly out fans there. Were disrespectful, man. It Dude. was like a bunch of Mike Millses and Phil Allens in the <laughs> and Silvas in the crowd. <laughs> uh. Just off. Uh, all right, on the <laughs> next match, Doc's upset at the Philly fans. Next up, we got the Midnight Express versus Trent Knight and Tommy Angel. Uh, we see a dude, dynamic dude's pitcher and pitcher promo that was nothing. Jim Ross asked Corny where he is going to be for the dudes versus Midnight, and Corny said, I am going to sit ringside, I guess. Corny claims the contract says all he has to do is be ringside. It doesn't necessarily say he's got to be in the actual corner of a team. So he says he's going to be at ringside. The Midnight do win. They they work a little bit more heel here than they've been doing. Uh, because, yeah. I mean, they've they really been baby faces. But you can see a little mm. bit of heel tactics sneaking in. and little more the, aggressive this week. Yep. And it's the right thing to do. And that's actually how you do it. Because... The dudes are the faces, while the Midnight aren't full-blown, you know, baby faces. They're starting to transition, and you can sense it, and uh, I love that. Doc, any thoughts on this match? Johnny, somebody needs to teach that dickhead how to speak into a mic. Terrible. He's terrible. And... I don't want to give too much away, but if they're going to start getting more aggressive, then that's going to tell me what's going to happen at the clash. Yeah, Harper, what do you think about this? They seem more like the old school express. 
Yep. Like the like the Crockett Express. Dum, 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 yeah. dum, dum, dum. They they weren't even playing around as much, you know. Uh-huh. It was it was serious, you know. Even the facial expressions, if you watch Stan, like when he did the kick right there, look, he's rubbing the guy's face into the mat after he took him down with the drop toe hold. Just those little bitty things led you to believe we're watching the old Express slowly coming back uh, with what they did here. And it was the first time they kind of really did that. Now, don't get me wrong. Stan's promos have been more heelish in the last couple of weeks, but definitely, definitely you could see it, the heel coming back out of him. All right, so they uh, after the midnight win, we do see a Starcade 1989 plug. I believe it's the first one we first one we've seen for Future Shock. Wednesday, December thirteenth is when it is taking place. So, Doc, any thoughts on Future Shock as we approach it? Man, I can't even deal with that. I got to figure out how to watch a Clash and the next Saturday night next week, and that's all I can focus on. Come on, right man. Now. It's well, dude, you just barely watch the one show a week you do. I actually fuck that. Like, Harbor, Harbor, remember back in the day when you used to watch this and two Smoky Mountains? Are there a Smoky Mountain than than than, than this shit? <laughs> Let's just redo that and pretend like we never saw it. Before. No, we've decided. We talked about this on the Clash. There, there will never ever be a day where we do a, two shows a week again. We were stupid. Yeah, no. Thanks, Mike. I I was watching. I posted a clip on Twitter of when Dirty White Boy burned the Confederate flag. Yeah. Man, when you post stuff nowadays, people are so dumb. I know, like, bro. It's like you're posting something that's damn near 30 years old. And you got people that comment like, I can't believe... Uh, he was the heel. Like, do you realize where they were? I know, I know how you feel inside as a person, but do you understand where (laughs) they shot that footage at? They weren't necessarily in the ninth ward of New Orleans before Katrina hit. Damn. Damn. Just a, everything just a has to head be, motherfuckers. Yeah, everything has to be reality TV for a shoot twenty four seven. Yeah, I'm like, like I had people sending me tweets and comments like, "How could you post that? Um, how how the hell is Dirty White Boy a heel?" I'm like, "Cause it was 1993." In the Smoky Mountain Territory. And if you went there right now and burned a Confederate flag, you'd probably get the same result. That is how. Why are you so dense? This is not real life. This is pro freaking wrestling in the mud show hills of Tennessee and Kentucky. Jesus, people. Like, people that, are that dumb. And if They're so be, woke, they're dumb. And if that shook you up, next week we'll be posting the Stormtrooper versus Dixie Dynamite and let you pick out the heel. <laughs> I'm and I don't want to hear anybody tell me what are you saying? You support you don't support the Confederate flag or you support the Confederate flag is I don't what give it a is. Shit about it's any a, of it. It's yeah, a it's, prop and an angle. Jesus Christ, that's my point. Like that's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about a wrestling angle. It ain't real. Hey, 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 hey. Stop Are these, it. these people getting worked up over an angle that's 30 years old. Harper, Harper, you've been watching The Young Rock? I've seen a bit of it uh, last night, and I was like, why is it junk? You're a dog. Look Already like fat. Why he looks like he works like a, a black Kevin James. I don't know, but I popped when he got drawn to the outlaw promotion by a ham <laughs> yeah i saw that <laughs> that, that it, Mike? yeah i actually posted about it last night because i thought that it was r- rather ridiculous that they posted that picture of the dog it looks like the dog that comes back to wcw right. in 1990 now dog was fat in wwf don't get me wrong but he wasn't that fat yeah like 
<laughs> it was like, damn, that dude is big. So anyway, and the dude who plays him, I, I, you know, he's a comedian. He's a funny guy. Did it's you, nothing against him. It's just when, did you pop when she gave Iron Sheik a list of words he couldn't say? <laughs> I like the dude who plays the Sheik. <laughs> yeah. That guy needs a spinoff show. <laughs> yeah, he does. But here's the thing. Like, that's another show. You can't take that show as, like, tr- it's not history. It's it's just a TV show, you know? Like, yeah, because I'm like, wait, why is the Macho Man there? Yeah, you can't. Like, they, they were, last night's show was 1982, supposedly, and Dog was in Mid-South, so... Right, it's it's just not realistic, is is my point. But I think it's fun. Fu- I mean, it's like a brick shit house back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he was built to God. He was solid. But my point being is, um, it it's a decent show. Like if you just want to like laugh and you know be yeah. like, oh yeah, that's funny. I mean, but it's not. You got to take it for what it's worth. It's not a true right. depiction of of history. So anyway, um, we're talking over the great Muda who's going to defeat Joe Cruz. There is a pitcher and pitcher from Tommy Rich at the beginning. Tommy Rich says he's coming for the TV title next week. And I'm just thinking to myself, no, no. Rich is going to get misted next week. And I'm really worried about your maturity levels when that happens and your ability to function for the rest of the show. Yeah. Okay. And and who's the guy with the hat? The Yakuza. Who? Stay. No, he's gonna be around for a while. You'll you'll find out, Harper. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Else. We'll no, spoil seriously, it. it's just thirty something years old. No, nah, he'll be around for a while. Okay. If, if, if if I'll let the people tell you, no. tag Harper in the no. Facebook group. He's mad. He he's the only no. person who does who asks a question that doesn't want the answer from the people. <laughs> he wants me to answer it, so I'm pulling a rib back on him. Muda wins. We'll find out who the guy is in the uh, in the hat and glasses on another it's week. Big Bubba. No, it ain't Big Bubba. All right, so then we go to the Samoan SWAT team, um, and the Samoan Savage and Sir Oliver Humperdinck. They're going to cut a quick promo. I don't have anything from it, Doc. Did you? No, I didn't. What about you, Hopper? Anything? No. Yeah, I didn't have nothing. I may have quit watching the show at this point. No, you well, didn't. Yeah, I quit taking notes. So then we go to the match, and we got the Samoan SWAT team versus the Italian Stallion and Chris Powers. They uh, beat SWAT their team. ass. Boy, yeah. did they. They beat their ass is a good way to put it. Uh, any other thoughts? Smoke it inside. Imagine doing that now. Mm. I'd start oh. smoking again. They'd shoot you off into the sun if you did that now. Yeah. So uh, that match ends quickly, and then uh, Corny and Jr. plug Jr. plug a bunch of dream matches that are supposedly happening next week, and then we get to close out the show some highlights. <laughs> God, look at that roundhouse kick! Uh, we get some highlights of Halloween Havoc. Nothing to discuss there because we've already covered Halloween Havoc. So on that note, that closes the show, and that's how they go off air. Wait, wait, uh, what? You got to vote for your favorite wrestler. I said that. Who is it? I don't know who it ends up being. Hi. Hi. <laughs> There's no way in hell it's that idiot. Or no way should, in hell. You, you should write them now. <laughs> Send them a letter. And just write, hey, my name's Michael Mills. I'm eight years old. I'm from New, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. And my favorite wrestler is the Z-Man. Doc. <laughs> and do it and do it in fucking crayon. You think that P.O. box is still there at one CNN center? Let's find out. Write him a fucking letter. I'm not. Yes. <laughs> you think it is? Yeah, right. I don't think so. One CNN center is still there. I bet they have a box. It's just not is it? World Championship Wrestling. All right. Anybody who's in Atlanta, let me know if it's still there. All right, uh, let's let's have a, a one of the listeners write him a letter and see what happens. I would tell Javorski to do it, but he'll crank off into an envelope and just put that in the mail. Come on, it'll dry out by the time he gets there, and then it's a white powder, and he gets arrested. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's anthrax. Oh my god. Uh, 
Sorry, All right. I just came back from the lab. It's not anthrax. It appears to be loser jizz. Oh, you browns fuck. It's <laughs> slow sperm. On that note, we got to rate this thing and hand out a Rolex. Before we do so, I want to remind you all, if you are not using our Amazon Associates link, please use it. It's tinyurl.com slash Amazon. a great way to support this show without spending anything extra. Give that link to the wives, girlfriends, whatever you have in your life, and tell them to use it every time they shop on Amazon. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash Amazon. Also, don't forget, if you want to listen to our Halloween Havoc 89 pay-per-view review, you got to go to Patreon at tinyurl.com slash PatreonBTT. Also, and we, we, got and new- we were good on that one. God almighty, we were all good. I was anyway. I don't know about y'all. I thought it was tremendous. Yeah, you told me after that. You're like, that's the best you've been in a long time, and I told you to shut up. I thought Silva was ribbing me at first when he told me the Tony Khan news. It just completely took me. I was caught off guard. And then he was like, no, it's true. And I was like, really? But it was good. We we had a lot of fun. All right. So, like I said, uh, to listen to the New York Knockout Clash or whatever and Halloween Havoc 89, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. We need to rate this thing, hand out some Rolexes. Uh, Doc, how about you go first on the uh, rating? I'm going to give this one. Man, there's some good promos in this one for a change. I'm going to give it an A-. minus. Wow. Yeah. I am thoroughly shocked. Why? Uh, you don't like wrestling. You like to complain about these shows sometimes, so I figured you'd uh, give it a worse rating. Harper, what are you giving it? A fucking B-? minus. A B. Uh-huh. I give it Who a doesn't challenge. like wrestling? But it rides. But thing is, I, I I saw these fucking job sh- shitheads last week, and they wear the same gear. <laughs> he gets he gets worked up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <sighs> I'm gonna give it a B, a B plus. There you go, you fucking copycat shithead. No, I'm gonna give it a B plus because Flair and Funk, those promos are great and. Corny yeah. was exceptional as well. So it'll get a B plus. On that note, uh, we do need to hand out a Rolex. So I got to give my Rolex to Terry Funk. Yeah. Doc, who are you giving yours to? I really struggled with this one because I wanted, I had Corny and Stan in there. I had Rick in there, but I'm also going with Funk because I thought Funk was phenomenal. Yep. Funk was good exceptional Harper who you got and you only have so much longer to, to get him in the mix right? I know that's what sucks man that's right? what that's... fucking sucks but that's when I, I, I was watching this I'm like the great mood is gonna be peacing out Funk's gonna be peacing out it's just like fuck Van Hammer fuck. will be in soon to help yeah you. Oh, yeah yeah Van Hammer and a fireman guy with the soldier and 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 fuck. You gotta start paying us. <laughs> I got a new laptop. Yeah. Harper got a new laptop not that long ago either. Yeah. Do you just buy laptops? You get silver one too? Um, no. I uh, got him for y'all. Y'all are frequent contributors to the show. We God are the stars right. of the show. Well, yeah, you get laptops when you break. We are one third of the show along with you. I can't imagine the laptop that Harper was using before the one he's got now and how. I guarantee it was a gateway. Uh, no, it was a Toshiba. The mo- the monitor, he probably had a monitor on it that was as big as a house. Harper. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Harper. How old was that thing? About six, seven years old. I thought it was older than that. I mean, that's that's yeah. ancient in laptop oh, yeah, technology. Yeah. <laughs> it finally died on him. All right. Well, uh, Doc, did you give uh, did you give your did we all go around the table with the Rolex? We sure did. Terry Funk, my friend. Terry. Right. On that note, got to handle some business. Just a couple of things. So, real quick, shout out to our vantage point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Murata and Michael Quinn, Northern version of BTT. Slightly classier, a little bit more professional, but still fun nonetheless. They support us. Please support them. Check them out. 
and check out their Twitter. They post lots of old school WWF video clips. Also, check out the Bottom Line cast with Mike Pru and JV. They do our ECW show on our Patreon feed, but they also do a show on the career of Stone Cold Steve Austin called the Bottom Line cast. Give them a listen. They support us. Please support them. On that note, I'm going to ask Doc. Doc, you got anything before we get out of here? Not one single motherfucking thing else. That's nice. Harper, what about you? Anything? Fuck no. Well, <laughs> wow. he is salty tonight. Harper, hit the tagline and let's go home. Fuck it. That's nice. <laughs> Apparently, we closed the show before we gave out Harper's video shoutouts, also known as a similar type of cameo that we promised on last week. So here's how Harper's video shoutouts will work. I would suggest you get out a paper and pen and write this down, and I'll try to remember to include this in the show description also for this week. First things first. Number one. Email Harper with the details of what you want in your video shout out or who the shout out is to. Harper's email address is Chris Harper 16 Wildcat with a K at gmail.com. I'm going to spell it for you for you. That is C H R I S H A R P E R number one, number six, Wildcat. W-I-L-D-K-A-T at gmail.com. Also, in that email, tell him what your PayPal address is. And the reason he needs to know what your PayPal address is, is because he's going to have to match that up to your email. PayPal Harper, $20. This is point number two. PayPal him 20 bucks. Harper's PayPal is, get your pen and paper out again if you put it down, CC. Three zero three eight eight. That's the number eight. CC at yahoo.com. Let me say it again for you. Harper's PayPal is CC three zero three eight eight CC at yahoo.com. Harper will then send you the video to the email address that you emailed him from requesting your video shout out. I'd say give him a couple of week turnaround time just due to shoot job and whatnot. And he's going to be checking his emails and matching things up. But that's it. Don't email the show address. Email Harper. If you missed any of those notes, go ahead and hit rewind and listen again. But I, like I said, I'm going to try to remember to put those details in the show description. That way, if you would like a video shout out from Harper, he will give you one. <laughs>